It's summertime in California wine country and it couldn't be a more beautiful time of the year. We've made that transition from spring into the time of the year when we're really focusing on the grapevines which are in full green growth now and we want to make sure that everything in the vineyard is nice and uniform. In the background we can hear the busy tractors working, the birds chirping, and it's a time of excitement and hopes for that it's going to be a perfect season when we get to harvest. Today I'm in one of our prime Merlot vineyards in the Alexander Valley and I'm checking out the progress of our grapes. Now there's three stages to berry development. The first stage is going to be simply cell division and expansion. So even though we're looking at Merlot here, during the first stage of berry development, it's just going to be hard little green balls of acid. And that's what it's all about, development of organic acids. The second phase, is it's a quicker period, but there's going to be some more of the seed maturation. The third phase, what we're seeing now, is the onset of grape ripening, and it's called veraison. And simply, this is really when the grape just turns purple, but there's a little bit more going on. We're going to see an increase in sugar levels, a decrease in that acidity, an increase in the pH, increase in the anthocyanins, which are the color pigments of the grape. But as I talked about back in the spring video, I wanted to see an even bud break. And we had the even bud break. And from the even bud break, we had an even fruit set. And so everything was going just perfectly. With the even fruit set, we had uniform berry size, which is very important. When they're not uniform, we call that heads and chickens. And so you have different size berries on each cluster. And that's gonna become problematic later in the season because each of those different sized berries are gonna mature at a different rate. That's not what we wanna see. There are a few key viticultural practices during the summer months that are critical to achieving the ripeness and uniformity of our grapes. Shoot positioning is very important for the developing vine. We wanna ensure that each leaf is receiving the maximum amount of sunshine that it possibly can because it's very important that that leaf is maximizing its photosynthesis potential to fully ripen that cluster. Believe it or not, 90% of the sunshine that's landing on that first leaf is gonna be absorbed, meaning that the leaf behind it, if they're not positioned properly, is only gonna start off with 10%. So roughly only 90% of that 10% is gonna be used from that leaf and so on. So it's important that each leaf is really positioned as well as it possibly can be to achieve maximum exposure. If you're visiting the vineyards during the early summer months, you may notice that there's gonna be a lot of leaves on one side of the vines. And largely the reason we're pulling for that is just to achieve uniform ripeness among the grapes. So if the rows are actually running north and south, we'll pull those leaves from the east side so that the clusters can accept some of that morning delicate sunshine. Now the clusters on the west side of the vines though, we're gonna leave those leaves on because that afternoon sunshine is gonna be really intense and could bring sunburn into the grapes. The other reason that we're pulling the leaves is because we wanna get more sunshine into the actual buds of those shoots. So those buds actually contain next year's growth in them. So by allowing sunshine to come in now, that's going to increase the potential that next year will also be a good crop. After fruit set in the early summer months, one of the first things that we do is we get out into the vines and we do cluster counting. And simply this is us going out there and looking at the overall balance of that year's crop. And so we'll take a look, balance being the amount of fruit that we have on the vine versus the amount of foliage that's growing. Is the vine really vegetative or is it more fruitful? And that's something that we take into consideration. And so depending on what that ratio is, we may actually decide to eliminate some of the clusters of that vine. Cluster counting is first off, pre veraison before the grapes turn purple, is going to allow us to set the pace for the rest of the season. You may notice behind me that the only thing that's really green are the vines and all the grasses on the hillsides are, are by this point of the summer very dry. And that's the way it goes. Most successful vineyard areas are in maritime or Mediterranean climates where you have wet, rainy winters and then the summers are dry and warm. And that works best for the vines. We wanna get that water into the soils over the winter that are gonna carry it through the summer. But during the summer months, we really want dry conditions. We want the roots of those vines to have to dig deep for that water, bring in a little bit of stress for that vine. And again, it's all about balance. If there was to be too much water, those berries would be large, watered down, diluted, uh, but at the same time, you'd also get problems with too much moisture in the canopy and development of mildew, and that would be problematic for uh, eventually the wine. Due to the lack of rainfall that we receive in the summer months, we are gonna be irrigating our vines. Now, depending on how much rain we get during the winter months, that's going to alter the amount that we're gonna to need to apply during the summer. It's something that we want to use as limited as possible. We don't want to use too much because that would be wasteful. But hitting that proper balance is exactly what we're looking for. 
Often when visitors come to wine country towards the end of August, beginning of September, they're often confused because they'll see a lot of clusters lying amongst the rows of vines. And that's simply because this is the time of the year for verres and thinning. This is a really important time for the viticulturalist because this gives us the prime opportunity to come through the vineyards and look to see if there's an even maturation amongst the berries. That is the ultimate goal of the wine grower. So anything that's sort of lagging behind, you can see in these clusters here, this one's still completely green. This one still has quite a bit of green berries on them. That's not the uniformity that we're looking for amongst the, the clusters, amongst each cluster on the vine and then for each vine within the vineyard block. So what we'll go is we'll go through and merely clip these off. And what that's gonna do is obviously eliminate that from the chance of ever making it into a bottle of Jordan, but that's going to focus the energy and the, and the rest of the resources into fully ripening the remaining clusters that are on the vine basically bringing that uniformity that we're looking for, ultimately leading to a perfect season. Roughly six weeks after Veraison, we're gonna go out and start sampling the grapes, just checking where the acidity levels are, the sugar levels, and we're gonna monitor that every day, and that's what's gonna really allow us to go into the fall season with the most information that we have to harvest at exactly the right time. So in the summer months, it may seem that the vines are just out there doing their own thing, but really this is, this is quite a busy time for the viticultural team making constant passes through each row of the vines, ensuring that everything is ripening uniformly. But really, when you step back and think about it, what we're really trying to do is just allow the vines to do their own thing. They know what to do, we're just helping them out to achieve perfect balance in sugars, tannins, acids, all in the efforts of making the perfect wine.